Now on the Volkswagen 7-speed direct shift gearbox, this seal is for one of the input shafts. And what happens is a seal must be installed after the transmission is assembled. If we try to slip the input shaft together with the seal in place, the garter spring will have a tendency to be pushed out. Now, of course, Volkswagen makes it very clear that you install this with a special tool after you assemble the transmission. Now, our special tool is going to be this piece of PVC pipe. So, what we're going to be doing is it fortunately just slips over the input shaft and is about the same diameter as the seal housing. So, hopefully this will install the seal and notice that I've carefully marked the correct depth. So again, you know, we think we know better. We try to put the seal in first and be very careful, but only to discover there is the garter spring out on the bench. And this was not one attempt. This was several attempts. So the seal must go in after the transmission is assembled. Now we're not actually showing the assembly of the seven speed gearbox because it is rather cumbersome and difficult. Uh, a couple of just uh, clues. One is the differential side gears are going to have a tendency to shift around. So be sure and put the bolt back. And here I'm just using this to center it. Be careful because if a side gear is off to the side, it will have a tendency to jam as it goes back into the case. So make sure that it's indeed centered correctly. Normally what happens is that uh, in the installation steps, we start out here. I have the reverse idler and the parking pole. And here we have uh, second, fourth, and sixth. This is going to go in first on one side of the input shaft. And then over on this side, I have one, three, five, and seven over here on this side. And one of the wear out mechanisms on this transmission is the this ball bearing type of uh, bushing here for the reverse shift rail, this has a tendency to break up. And we, of course, showed this earlier on. I got a brand new one in there. And these are just plastic bushings. Also, that the plastic bushings that ride in the synchronizer hubs, they have a tendency to wear too. And a remanufactured set of shift forks can be purchased. And when I say purchased, I'm talking about uh, um, uh, Asia and Europe. Volkswagen in this country services their transmission as an assembly. All right, now the next step is we're going to go ahead and prepare to put the uh, case halves together. Remember that this bearing is a press fit. All right, here we're preparing to put the case halves together. I'm just going to do a quick test fit. Again, the inner race of this bearing to the input shaft is going to be a press fit. Here, the bearing is retained into the case with this snap ring. Uh, we removed this bearing, thoroughly cleaned the case, inspected it. Here we see the ball and springs going against the four shift rails. These go against the detents of the four shift rails. And, of course, as I put this together, i got to ensure that the shift rails are going to line up properly and go into their different ports. This is just simply an ore oil weir. What it's doing is just simply catching oil that's slung and using it to lubricate this bearing. It just flows right down into the bearing cavity. And here we see the other bearing cavities. Now... We're going to actually use the bolts of the uh, bell housing to help clamp this down. And I'm going to support the input shaft with a series of wood blocks underneath 
and uh, with a corresponding directly selected socket I'm going to drive that inner race down onto the input shaft being careful to do that probably a nice big press would be nice but we're not really equipped for that and uh, actually Volkswagen service manual does show supporting the input shaft and driving the inner race there onto the input shaft. Okay, as you can see, we have the input shaft solidly supported by a series of wood blocks. And if you look here at the transmission case, you can see the transmission is actually being supported by the intersection of the input shaft. This is very, very important. Now what I've done is I have used the bolts of the case to initially draw down the two case halves. And then I'm using this socket that fits over the input shaft nicely but drives the inner race of the bearing down onto the shaft. Note the shaft is, is supported by the blocks. And then finally when I got it down far enough then I can go ahead and use these snap ring pliers to install the snap ring. Make sure it's firmly seated. And it wouldn't hurt to use just simply a brass drift to just tuck the snap ring in. Make sure that it's indeed seated properly. Okay, here we see the old seal cover for the bearing. And what happens, I actually have to punch a hole in it to pop it out. And this is the new one. Now, you're not going to get that new one from Volkswagen. I've actually purchased a seal kit here from a company in mainland China. And it actually arrived within about a week. And uh, in the seal kit was, of course, obviously this bearing cap. Now, as you assemble the transmission, we want to make sure that I'm able to shift through all the gears without any problem. Make sure the shift forks move smoothly without any trouble whatsoever. Here's the big offender right here. This is what happened is I lost my reverse shift fork because of the ball bushing there in the case. It actually broke up and we saw that in the earlier section, but now it's moving very smoothly. So now I should have my reverse without any, any trouble. Notice that I'm using my copper screwdriver. I'm not going to scratch anything. Yeah, that's no problem there, and I wasn't before either. And make sure everything's feeling good. No problem. So there I'm going through all my different ranges. So I have my reverse, my second, my fourth, my sixth, my first, my third, my fifth, my seventh. And away we go. One thing you want to be sensitive to is that when working with the uh, unit and assembling it is that the side gears and the differential carrier don't slip out of position. Easy way to do it is just simply put a bolt back and here I just have my six millimeter Allen uh, just simply keeping it in position. I left that there as I put the case on. Okay, here we see the uh, mechanical portion of the Volkswagen DQ200 7-speed dual clutch, dry clutch transmission assembled. And uh, now we're ready to basically test it. Now, what happens is the dual clutch assembly cannot be disassembled. What we actually did is cut the old one in, into pieces so that I could recover the two friction discs for testing purposes. Now, I actually have two input shafts. And I'm just going to reach over here and make sure that I'm in neutral. And then um, uh, we'll go ahead and show that both input shafts spin freely and the output shaft does not. So here we go. Here I put the transmission in neutral, and as you can see, both input shafts spring freely. Now, the 
This input shaft is going to provide the ratios for reverse, second, fourth, and sixth. And this input shaft is going to be first, third, fifth, and seventh. Now, just as simply as a diagnostic aid, I put that plastic pipe there just to keep my clutch from sliding off the splines. Now, we said this first one was reverse, so I'm going to put the transmission in reverse. Okay, and here as we spin, we take a look at the output shaft and we can see that the tremendous reduction ratio, and sure enough, as I'm turning the clutch disc clockwise, we see that the output shaft is turning counterclockwise. Now, that's going to be reverse. So now I'm going to go ahead and back to neutral. Now, here's third gear. And one thing is just a little bit stiff. Let me just go ahead and give it a little... There we go. There's no gear oil in it, so these little cone clutches here on the synchronizer sometimes stick a little bit. But as you can see, that's my third gear. Alright, so we'll go back to neutral. And now, we'll go ahead and take a look at um, what we would consider fifth, and then Okay, here's fifth gear. I'm sorry, not fifth gear, fourth gear. Fourth gear, this is reverse second, fourth, and then sixth. And there's sixth gear. Pretty easy to turn, almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Getting closer. All right. Okay, now that's that first input shaft. Now we're ready to take a look at the second input shaft. And this is going to be for first, third, fifth, and seventh. So here we go. Let's go ahead and we'll start off with first gear. Okay, here we have first gear. Very easy to turn. Here we have third. Back to neutral. Let's take a look at fifth. There it goes. When we were actually doing this, we thought there was something wrong, but what happens is the synchronizer hub, there's no oil in the transmission at all. The synchronizer hub, as it moves across the um, synchronizer spline, it comes up against the cone clutch first and then slides past it as long as the synchronizer hub and the synchronizer teeth on the corresponding gear are in a line and goes into gear. So what happens, you'll notice that that initial turn is what it takes. Once I get it turning, it turns freely. And there we go. And then finally, the next gear. Now you'll notice I'm only turning one input shaft. If I go ahead and put this, the transmission in reverse now, there we go. Okay, the transmission in reverse, that does not affect this input shaft. So that means I can change gears 